Hey there, I'm Tucker and you're watching D&D Daily, where we release new D&D content every day. If you're looking for D&D inspiration and information, then you're in the right place, because today we're talking about the Beacon of Hope, a woman out to cure the world of despair. If you want to play the Beacon of Hope, there's two things you're going to need. First, you're going to be, need to be an Eladrin Elf, and second, you're going to need to be an Oath of Ancients Paladin. The Beacon of Hope started out her life growing up in a small village, and she wanted her whole life to be a bard. She wanted to be a performer and an entertainer. But things changed once her village was struck with a plague. As this plague spread, it killed a lot of the people in her village, and her village started to go into the depths of despair. And she was right there along with everybody, until she noticed that there was nobody to be a Beacon of Hope in her village. So she needed to step up. She decided to step up and be that hope for the people around her. That day she made her oaths and promised everyone in her village that she was going to fight against the darkness. That she was going to go out into the world and find a cure for this dreadful plague. And as the Beacon of Hope goes on her adventures, in her heart she's always going to be looking for that cure and always looking for that last hope for her village. Because the Beacon of Hope is an Eladrin, her personality is going to be very dynamic and always be changing. In her spring state, the Beacon of Hope is going to be energetic, she's going to be silly, she's going to be joyful, vigorous, but she's going to be overall a very positive mood. In her summer form, she's going to be a lot more intense. Still very high energy, but it's going to be a lot more intense, stubborn, and kind of like a bulldozer that she just needs to get done what she needs to get done. In her fall state, she is going to be more low energy. She's going to be very focused on comfort and helping those around her, uh, but she's going to be very focused on being relaxed, being comfortable, and uh, helping everyone else to be feel that warmth around her. And in her winter state, she's going to be very low energy. She's going to be the least hopeful. And because of these two things together, she's going to be very afraid of going into her winter state. She's going to avoid it like the plague. Because of this fear, she's going to be very focused on keeping an upbeat attitude and always trying to look on the brighter side of things. But if she, if she did get a little depressed, she would fall into this winter state and I think it would be kind of a vicious, uh, vicious cycle, spiraling downward. This could be what eventually leads her to break her oaths, so I'd be very careful of this, playing her as a character. This winter state of hers is going to be really scary to her because it's the opposite of her oaths. It's low energy, it is almost nigh unto despair, and because of this she's going to be very afraid of it and very proactive in working against it. Along this same line, she's going to be always be very positive and she's always going to be looking on the brighter side of things. And whether or not this affects it, I think it's cool to have her be afraid of the cold. So if she does start to get cold, she's going to start having that frightened condition, whether it's the mechanical frightened condition or just you role-playing her with a little bit of fear. But she would always be looking for ways to avoid the cold. However, this winter state is still a part of her. It's a part of her that she can never get rid of, so this would be a very big part of her character arc and her character development, learning to accept that state and live with it while still following her oaths. And the common thread through all four of these seasonal states is that she is focused on helping people. Though in the winter, she has to focus a lot more on helping herself to keep her oaths. In combat, the Beacon of Hope is going to be a Crypt Fisher. She is going to use the Mounted Combatant feat, which gives her advantage on all attacks against creatures medium or smaller. And she's going to use the Double Bladed Scimitar, which is going to give her her normal two attacks as well as one bonus action attack. And these two things together are going to give her six dice to roll every turn, where she can really fish for that crit to get that sweet, sweet smite. Probably the coolest mechanic of the Beacon of Hope in combat is her using her face step and her misty step along with her mount. You can have her mount run up alongside you as you're finishing your attacks on your opponent, and then you can misty step, poof, and now you're on top of your horse. You can use this with your face step once per rest, or with your misty step using your spell slots. Imagine you're riding up to a battle atop the city wall, and with no way to go up to it, you charge full speed ahead, and at the last second you poof, appear up on top of the city wall using your misty step. 
and from that you can go right into combat with no loss of transition. Out of combat, the Beacon of Hope is going to be really good at strength. She's going to have her heavy armor and she's also going to be really good at athletics. So she can be really good at jumping, lifting, pushing, grappling, all those things she's going to be pretty good at. The Beacon of Hope is also going to be particularly good at charisma because she's a paladin that is one of the stats she's going to need to be at least pretty good in. And she's going to use her performance and her persuasion a lot. Especially with her entertainer background, she is going to be proficient in some instruments, which will be pretty cool for her to be performing. And her performance is going to lead right into her, her oaths, as one of her oaths is to help people appreciate art and beauty around her. However, because of her oaths, she wouldn't use deception or intimidation very often. Unless it was very necessary, she would put those way on that back burner, and she would not take proficiency in those skills. In her downtime, there's going to be one main thing on her plate, which is going to be finding a cure for that plague. So she's going to be talking to doctors, talking to witch doctors, talking to anybody that would know anything about a plague, and she's going to be seeking out a cure for that plague for her people. Also in her downtime, she's also going to be keeping her O's by performing, like we said earlier, and this is going to help her to be a, a semi-bard type character in her out-of-combat time, which I think is going to be really uh, interesting. The key mechanics for the Beacon of Hope, like we've mentioned, are going to be her double-bladed scimitar, her misty step, fine steed, and uh, her mountain combatant feet. Another honorable mention would be Ensnaring Strike. It's a level 1 spell for her that she can choose to use instead of her Divine Smite. It is really good at restraining people and doing a little bit of damage, so it'd be good for non-lethal. And it's particularly good against flying creatures. If you have an opportunity to get up and smack them, they will fall because they're restrained. And the other one is the added bonuses of Face Step as opposed to Misty Step. Though you can only use Face Step once every rest, it is going to be really good as it gives you the 30 foot teleport as well as some added effects depending on what form or what season you are representing at that time. So summer you get to do some fire damage, winter you get to add a feared condition, spring you get to teleport somebody else instead of you, and fall you get to charm a couple people. And Face Step, unlike Misty Step, is an ability from her race instead of a spell. So you can use a spell and phase step in the same turn. And the weakness of the Beacon of Hope is going to be range. Range is just not her strong suit because she's a strength build and not a dex build, so she's not going to be super, key, super good at it. However, with her fine steed and her great mobility from her teleportation, she can close that gap pretty quickly. Another weakness is that without her steed, her strategy somewhat falls apart. Her mobility goes down a lot, and her mounted combatant advantage just goes away. So she really needs a steed to be really effective. As an NPC, the Beacon of Hope could just be played like as written above. She could be looking for that cure for her plague and runs into the party and asks for their assistance. Or maybe a doctor has the, assigns the party to go help the Beacon of Hope to find that cure. Or maybe one of the people in the party is affected by that plague and they have to work together to find that cure. And the key note that you're trying to hit with this character, as either an NPC or a PC, is going to be high mobility from her steed in one direction. She's going to charge forward, misty step off, fight a couple people, hit them a couple times, and then she's going to tell Faye step back onto her horse and be a really good uh, hit and run character. So plan some combats where she can use her teleport to either go vertical or to go on and off her horse to make it a really unique combat. How would you use the Beacon of Hope in one of your games? What would you do differently? What would you do to make her better? And what would you like to see in one of these videos? Let us know in the comments below. And in the next episode of D&D Flavor Builds, we're going to be talking about the Innkeeper, a heartfelt halfling dedicated to his hearth. So make sure to hit that subscribe button because you're definitely not going to want to miss that. Thanks.